guys welcome back to the channel thanks again for tuning in we're on our way to Folkestone now driving through South London running late not really sure if I'm gonna be able to make up the time on a Friday afternoon but um, yeah not really sure what the implications are of missing the train uh, Le Shuttle as it's now known as on their website so uh, wish me luck hopefully no penalty and manage to make it Hundred and ninety-two miles to empty with a full tank. <sighs> this is gonna be an expensive trip. Finally out of London on the motorway to the crossing. So we've made it, checked in. Um, I didn't actually realise I was on the flexi, so um, yeah, no issue. Obviously it just means you get there a bit later and a bit hanging around, but Starbucks are taking care of that. So, um, yeah, goodbye. You are now crossing the border. Cheeky little head nod from, um, from Steward. See you on the train. Um, yeah, no random check. Cheers, mate. What, well, this one? Yep, that one. Sweet, cheers. Yeah, no, um, no random check this time, I hope. But um, it's rammed. Friday evening. Off. Yeah. There's about 15 cars. Bam, traffic and travel. The I don't know what happened there. I really like the northern part of France. It's dominated by farmland, which I find very calming. That's probably helped by the largely empty motorway. I even spotted my first car at the following junction. I haven't owned a French car since. I'll tell you what, this engine is a masterpiece. It's not even running, but just listen to it. My goodness. Ooh. After four hours at the wheel, me and my Corvette arrive at my hotel on the eastern tip of Belgium. It also seemed a fitting place for a glance around my new American sports car. Not sure I'd ever thought I'd say that, but it's happened. And the more I look at it, the happier I am with the paint I chose. I feel some cars just suit a particular colour. Next morning, I was that keen to get going, I skipped breakfast entirely. Walking over to the vet, knowing I've got a long old day of driving can be pretty daunting. But when you've got a car you enjoy this much, to me, it's just exciting. As I drive up the road from the hotel, I head east across the border. Belgium actually borders four countries, but I'm driving to a place called Wilts. For everybody watching, it's in Luxembourg. Found a place to stop and park up. Nice backdrop. I managed to walk up the five million steps to the top. Had to crop out the sound though. Breathing was all over the place. See what this has in store. Luxembourg, a little Sylvia. I know, the mic was attached to the exhaust instead of me. After a small series of hairpins, I arrive at the most northern of the three national parks in Luxembourg. One of the first things I noted about the Corvette was the gearbox. I've never been a huge fan of living with dual clutch automatics. I know they're good around tracks, but day to day they're just not hugely practical. They take ages to get in reverse and can be really clunky around town, especially in the lower gears. This one though, 
is brilliant. Chevrolet claimed to have built it from the ground up and it shows. Go on the cyclists. Every hundred yards or so, the forestry goes from being dense to opening up, exposing yet another one of its treasures. just know when you find the right spot. This corner looked like a great place to park up, take a couple of photos and to take in the viridescent surroundings. Back on the move shortly though, always more things to see. As you break away from the forest in the north, you're greeted with a lovely panoramic view of the open terrain, the landscape being full of undulations in various different shades of green. I noticed that there weren't many cars anywhere in this country. Turns out the reason why might be because in 2020, Luxembourg became one of the first countries in the world to implement free public transport. So trains, buses and trams are available at no cost to both residents and even tourists. Money shouldn't be the motivation for that though. Luxembourg has the highest minimum wage in the world at just over 2,000 euros a month. I'd be putting a fair chunk of that towards something with four wheels and a big engine. But maybe that's just me. Cheeky slide round the corner accelerating down the road on the way to the next. The final stop in Luxembourg for me was a national stadium. For those that watched a third of my Spanish videos might remember me stopping off at Andorra's ground on my way back to the UK. Like Andorra, Luxembourg is a relative minnow and I think they're ranked 85th in the FIFA World Rankings. They're sandwiched between Jordan and Bahrain. Stade de Luxembourg was recently opened in 2021 after costing over 80 million euros to build. It has just under 10,000 capacity for sporting events such as football and rugby and like a lot of modern stadiums it also hosts up to 15,000 people for concerts. For those that have watched from the start of my journey might remember me banging on about the running in of my Lotus Amira on my second ever video. This is the dashboard for the Corvette C8 and you'll notice that the maximum revs are limited to 3,500 RPM. But after 500 miles, this changes. And now, she's opened up. Who's ready for more tours around Europe? I can't wait to bring you more content in special locations like this. Thanks for watching and do subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you check out my last two videos of me picking up my Corvette and why I sold my Lotus Amira.